Welcome back to Mystery Woman Knowledge. I'm the host that makes up the dumb intros, Sam Beer. With us as always is the host that has no idea what I'm about to say, Tori Hirsch. <laughs> no, and I'm really excited for this episode because I, whenever we're coming up with ideas, I just said, oh, do you want to talk about volcanoes? And I was going to elaborate or ask for details, but you just ran with volcanoes in general, so I don't know what we're talking about today. Volcanoes. All right. Cool. Take me, <laughs> take me through volcanoes, Sam. Um, well, to begin with, a the first uh, public service announcement. I wrote this out script style, so if I get monotone, let me know. You're fine. Cool. Second PSA. I frequent the USGS page so often that I've started getting Google News updates when volcanoes I follow get their information updated. That's nice. Isn't that what you want at the end of the day? I mean, I feel like that qualifies me to talk about volcanoes. Of with course. With very limited scientific terminology and knowledge. <laughs> yes. I'd also like to, to uh, the third PSA. Ooh, one, two, three. I would like to apologize for any incorrect incorrect pronunciations of locations because I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and I'm white. Doesn't excuse it, but I'm white. Sam, you're gonna be fine. Number four! <laughs> PSA what? number four! Oh my god. <laughs> it turned into a bit after a while. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to say if you're here for facts for like a project or something, yes. Uh, find a Wikipedia article. Or go to usgs.gov and find your destined volcano. Now. <laughs> Why are you riddled with insecurities about this topic? You're going to do fine. This is going to be super entertaining for anyone that's still with us and hasn't left and gone to Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to be, Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. You can get lost for hours there. This is a, a actually an ad for Wikipedia. <laughs> it's an ad for Wikipedia. <laughs> if every one of their <laughs> visitors donates one dollar, <laughs> this is not an ad for Wikipedia. Please don't come for me. Now, because I feel obligated to give some quick facts about volcanoes because yeah. it's not going to be super funny this episode. So we, I almost asked you, I was like, should we start with what is a volcano? <laughs> Here? A volcano? Big rock. A lot of hot rock. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> She's not wrong, folks. <laughs> that's, there are too that's many really types. Important. There are too many types of volcanoes. And there's not enough me to care. But I do love a volcano. But we'll get into that in a minute. The fun facts I would like to include in this episode yeah. I'm going to throw in at the beginning. They're also not really fun. We'll but I enjoy them. We'll them up. Yeah, we'll spice them up. We should have, like, sound effects or something. You know, <laughs> I record everything. And I edit everything. Do you think <laughs> I have a fucking soundboard? Alright, you know what? I'll make a sound effect every time you give us a fact. Go on. I'm excited for these. Come on, Sam. Jazz it up. Tori Hirsch. And one to three listeners. If you, <laughs> if you, if you follow any volcano news, you will know that Kilauea, Kilauea in Hawaii has been erupting most of the year. But what you probably don't know is that it's been erupting since 1983. Boy, <laughs> Fascinating. In the United States alone, there are 161 identified volcanoes. How many was that? Say that again. Sorry. 161. 161. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. That is really cool. Most of the United States volcanoes are in Alaska, where there is at least one eruption a year. That's interesting. No reason there's that many in Alaska, though. I don't know that number. I didn't write it down. Yeah. Uh, is because Alaska exists on the Ring of Fire. Oh, yes. Are we going to talk about the Ring of Fire, or... I didn't write it down, we... but I can tell you what the Ring of Fire is, just off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. The 
plates around the Pacific Ocean move frequently enough that the magma comes up more frequently around the plate. Oh. That's why, like, in Pennsylvania, for example, we have no volcanoes because we do not move. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Where's the next one? Number four of four. Number four, fun fact of four. There are potentially 1,500 active volcanoes in the world. Active, not dormant. Active. So, when you say active, what exactly does that mean? Are they spewing? No. Or are they just, like, smoking a bit? Or what's going on? Um, active, I believe active volcanoes are, they have magma in them. Or, it's lava when it explodes, it's magma when it's still inside. Okay. And what is a dormant volcano, then? Something that's completely dried up? Nada. Ain't shit for fuck going on in that boy. Okay. So, the way volcanoes work gets into it anyway. The way volcanoes yeah. work is there's essentially a spout and then there's a, like a like a bowl underneath it with a direct line to the spout. Mm. Lava will collect there in the bowl and then come up the spout when enough pressure builds. Oh, cool. In other words, I want Quick facts, quick fun facts. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about what I truly hyper fixate on. Yeah. Now, you know me, Tori Hirsch. Uh, I yes. would hope. We've been friends for four <laughs> years. <laughs> four years in November. Why do you keep track? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyway, <laughs> got a little weird in here tonight. <laughs> um, I love a good hotspot volcano. A hotspot volcano differs, differs from a ring of fire volcano purely because they are cooler. Not temperature-wise, but just Sam beer-wise, I think they're the tightest shit on the planet. Why, Sam? Because hotspot volcanoes form over... And you can take a wild guess here, uh, hot spots on tectonic plates. But Very. the tectonic plates can do some fucking wild shit under them, which is why we're going to talk about my favorite, one of my favorites. Oh my god, I thought you wanted me to finish this sentence. I'm sorry, you paused no. that too, And I was like, oh god. <laughs> think about volcanoes. <laughs> Um, tectonic plates? I don't know, Sam. We're going to talk about one of my favorite hotspot volcanoes, which is... Mm. It has, like, three names. I didn't write the third one down. I think the third one is its, like, actual volcanic name. But it's called Changbai, and it's in China. Or it's Pigtu on the North Korean side of the mountain. Because the mountain is pretty much split between the North Korean China borders. Okay. Fun fact about that, because I know it, because I watched the video on Chongbai. Um, North Korea set up a scientific observation deck on the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And they frequently invite um, American scientists over there who just willingly go. Which I don't think that's a smart idea, but whatever. Um, anyway, that was my anecdote about not trusting North Korea. Immediately wants to talk about how Kim Jong-un faked his death like eight times this year, last year. Welcome to the today's episode, which is <laughs> Volcanoes <laughs> and Kim Jong-un faked yeah. his death three whole fucking times. <laughs> and people believed it? <laughs> By number three, you gotta realize. Anyway. Who the fuck was I? Chongbai is, I think, the mountain range. I think that's what the mountain range is actually called, is Chongbai. Mm -hmm. But Chongbai had one of the largest recorded eruptions. And I say recorded because that's important. We could talk, uh, later we'll talk about um, my boy Wawa, Wawa Springs. Mm -hmm. Me and you talked about him the other day. Mm -hmm. They just think they know. Like, there's 
you can get whatever evidence you want out of the ground. Like, you can look at the rocks. No one was around to be like, Wawa Springs went off and it was huge. People mm. were around for Changbai. Mm. Um, it happened in 946. Eighty? I didn't write that down. I don't know why I didn't write that down. Um, but it also, the eruption was so big that it caused significant climate change for a short time in northeastern China. Wow. Um, so what kind of stuff started happening as, as a result of the climate change in the volcano? Significant cooling. Mm. I didn't really look into the climate change because it's, like, anyone, it's, it was 946, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm sure they were fucking cold. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just a giant, it was a giant explosion caused so much ash to form, ash clouds to form, that it was just probably nighttime significantly for a while in this area. Yeah. Um, you could reference uh Saint Vincent here since that's going off. Cause we saw you watched I sent you the video of Saint Vincent going off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you did. It was it's probably that. like that, but so significantly bigger. So significantly bigger that it would probably if unless you saw it, it's not even like you can't even think about the size of it unless you see it, you know. Yeah. Um, the cal caldera of the Changbai volcano is actually a huge lake now. It's a crater lake. The caldera is basically the the bowl of the that's under the volcano. Oh, very cool. So, um. I think I'll talk about it later, but uh, Mount St. Helens, or St. Helens, I call her Mount St. Helens because she deserves it. She exploded. Her mm. caldera is a crater. Okay. Yeah. So the the lake is now called Heaven's Lake. It's just a giant crater lake. Yeah. But the I think, personally, the most interesting thing about Changbai is that the tectonic plate under this volcano I don't know if they I don't know if I read that if it's um extinct or not I, do, I doubt it's extinct super volcanoes don't tend to go extinct but mm -hmm. they tend to just go to sleep the the tectonic plates under uh I would say I would say under Changbai, but it's a hotspot volcano, so it's landlocked. It has no tectonic plates moving, so the plate that it's formed on doesn't move. But I don't remember what the fucking plate's called. The plate that's going under its plate right now is ripping in half, essentially. Like it's folding and ripping. Oh my god! Which pushes the lava so you have normally it would just be like the dormant plate and then the plate that's moving goes under it that's what normally happens mm -hmm. but this plate at some point has started it started bending and then it hit i think what they said was it hit like a cooler spot at some point and just ripped in half yeah so you have the plate continues to go under the coal spot but it's pushing up slightly and I think it's like remelting or something. And that forms the Changbai the new like Changbai uh called caldera spot. Oh, okay. Is I think what's happening there. But it's super fucking cool and I'm probably fucking wrong, but I know it's ripping. But I mm -hmm. encourage Googling of this. There's also a really good video. I think it's like half an hour long on YouTube. Find him. Watch him. I think it's called China's Most Interesting Volcano. It does sound interesting. But it's been like three months since I watched it, so don't quote me. <laughs> the near photographic memory only gets you so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for additional context on Changbai, 
uh, the volcanic explosiv explosivity index or the VEI was seven. The last time Yellowstone went off, Yellowstone's also a hotspot volcano. It's very interesting. Um, yeah. Last time Yellowstone went off, 64,000, 640,000 years ago, it was a VEI of eight. So, you can rank that. But VEI of eight, I've seen, has such a broad. Um, like a level to it because my boy Wawa my boy Wawa Springs mm -hmm. who's in Utah he's a dormant I don't know why I call him he my boy uh, my boy Wawa Springs in Utah is dormant currently but when he went off 30 million years ago he had a, he also had a VEI of 8 oh and from what we talked about Mm -hmm. You know that's significant, like a yeah. significant change. But where Yellowstone covered a thousand cubic kilometers of area, and that's um two hundred and forty cubic miles, almost it was like two hundred and thirty nine cubic miles mm -hmm. of area when it exploded. Wawa Springs covered five thousand five hundred cubic kilometers, and that's one thousand three hundred and nineteen cubic miles. So that's how different a VEI of 8 can be. Yeah. Um, and something else that we also talked about was that when Wawa Springs went off, they said that it laid down something like 13 mile deep pyroclastic rock, which is, or pyroclastic flow, which is um, the minerals, pyroclastic rock is when minerals from the ash cloud meet the ground and meet the hot lava. Mm -hmm. They're usually really fucking ugly. Which, I mean, I, I want to talk about this again. How the fuck didn't they know? They found Wawa Springs in 2013. How didn't they know Wawa Springs was there? I have no idea. Because dinosaur expert Tori Hershier tells me, dinosaur, uh, broad term, because I don't remember the fucking other ones. Sorry, Tori Hirsch. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're always down there getting them dino bones. They are. Utah is a hot spot. Um, it's kind of like the hot spot for dinosaur bones in the U.S. So how did they know about... Wawa Springs. I don't know. You know what I mean? I think that's super weird. I think that's my, so weird. I mean, we both my, went to art school, take this with a grain of salt. But. <laughs> my guess is that they probably did have some sort of idea or inclination or something, and they just kind of like didn't have a lot of the proof to back it up. So maybe they, in their minds, thought, like, this rock is different. This is kind of weird. And then later I mean, on. You know. Utah still has some volcanic activity. From what I read, I didn't read up on it, because it wasn't... I read up on it, like, two months ago, when someone said on USGS that there was volcanic activity in Utah, and I was like, that's suspicious. Yeah. But that's all I remember about it. But I still think it's bizarre. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe we should take a look at Wawa again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would also like to give a shout out to one of Wawa's three calderas, Big John. Big That's John. his name. That's his legal name. Why are we shouting out Big John? Because the other two are <laughs> totally normally named. Like, they're named after scientists, but I just like to think that this one scientist was like, Big John! <laughs> and I like it. What are the other two names? Do you have those written? I don't. They were boring. Hmm. <laughs> I can Google them real quick. Listen to her type, ladies and gentlemen. I'm already done. That is a speed that is just completely ridiculous. <laughs> Go off, dude. No, every time I type, it's like... Tw -tw 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 -tw. Listening to Sam type is ridiculous. I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. Why can't I fucking find them? You type in Big John after it. 
<laughs> I am live learning about super volcanoes. Um, it's called the Indian Peak Caliente Ignum Bright Field, which is where Wawa Springs is. But I guess it goes into Nevada, too. Oh, wow. Tell me about Big John. I'm trying to scan this article and find out the other names, but I can't, so it's fine. Closes it. <laughs> well, I still think that's interesting. I still think it's super funny, too. If oh, I were John? a scientist, and I, yeah, and if I wanted things named after me, how fun! Well, those are the only scientists you can trust are the people that name shit like Big John or Ben Tonics. Mm hmm. <laughs> Big Tory. Call that one Big Tory. Small Tory. Maybe John was a small, <laughs> small man. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know what John's intentions are. Yeah, but are. I respect Big John. Mm -hmm. And his name or John. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I I don't know if his name's John. I didn't look into it. I just looked that it's called Big John. <laughs> I'd also like to read you a paraphrased what I believe is a threat that I read in an article about Wawa Springs, and it goes as follows: Wawa isn't extinct, but dormant. Take that as you will. Mm. <laughs> I read that as a threat. Yeah. And for a further comparison of how fucking huge Wawa Springs was, I'm going to reference Mount St. Helens officially here. Mm -hmm. Mount St. Helens had a VEI of four. You can see images of Mount St. Helens. Like, Mount mm -hmm. St. Helens still fucking exists. Mount St. Helens exploded, and it only had a VEI of four. Like, it full on exploded. She's Googling it. I wanna- I've- I- I haven't seen images. You haven't seen Mount St. Helens? No, I think I only saw it, like, vaguely, a long time ago. Well, the- something. do you know the famous story of the Mount St. Helens explosion, uh, images? No. I don't remember his name, but a I think he was a f scientist and a photographer went up there with a couple people and he was just taking images of Mount St. Helens. And then it started. The eruption started. No. I think he was alone up there, actually. I can't remember the exact story, but he was up there taking images of Mount St. Helens and he caught the explosion on camera. And then realized he had no time to evacuate, so he put the camera under his body, assumed the fetal position, and was- he died. What?! Yeah. And then oh they were- they were God. able- they were ever- they were able to recover the camera and see Ow. images. Because his body insulated it. What? Yeah. He was what? up on- Lava? He was up on a ridge taking. Uh, yeah, okay. he wasn't on Mount St. Helens, but he was, was up on a ridge no. taking. Yeah, no. But he was taking images of it, and then it went off. You can see. If you type in photographer after Mount St. Helens, you can mm -hmm. see the images he caught, and you can probably find a picture of him on Google. But he caught the 1980s eruption. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And he either put the camera under him or the film under him to save it. That is absolutely wild. Mm hmm Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Mm hmm Robert Landsberg. That's his name. Wow. But you can see how, like amazing and s horrifying this eruption is, Tori. Yeah. Now imagine that times two times 50? I don't know how it scales on the VEI, but just imagine that scaling. That's nuts. Imagine that, but with 13 miles of pyroclastic rock and lava.
I can't imagine. <laughs> exactly. God. Exactly. These are things that you can't... You really... You can look at numbers all you want. You can look at 100 and, or 1,319 cubic miles of explosion of, of damage. Yeah. But you can't, like, put into context, like, how many people died? How many people are we going to be able to find? How many animals died? Yeah, the devastation is just insane. That's why I think it's interesting, because Yellowstone continues, I think they're labeling it VI of 7 for the next time it goes off, which isn't soon at all, people. But I read that article that was like, they don't know if it's going to explode or just crack. How do the fuck, what does a cracked volcano look like? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how much lava is a cracked volcano gonna shoot out of it? How much lo- How much ash and climate change is a VI of 7 gonna put out? Mm-hmm. How localized is it gonna be? How? Because with, with Chongbai, it was just the northeastern part of China. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know shit for fuck about, like, the airflow, like, the wind paths and shit around the earth. They change, I know that they change all year round. Yeah. Can, can a volcano take out more people in December than it can in July? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll also say that, um, when I was reading about, uh, my boy Walla, they said that um, Yellowstone isn't a worry unless the Earth gets substantially warmer or cooler. Because apparently, super volcanoes, like, the rarer the explosion, the worse the explosion. But the rarer the explosion, the more things have to happen to make it explode. Oh. Yeah, so while you have... Um, however many volcanoes in Alaska going off every year, or Kilauea going off every year, or Mauna Loa going off. I don't know how often Mauna Loa goes off. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Mauna Loa's going off. Fun fact. Got an update about that on USGS a couple weeks ago, or last week. Lord. Um, but those go off every year, at least, for months. Or constantly or whatever Mm -hmm. but they also like they come with risks like every volcano comes with risks you can one can put out more sulfur emissions one can put out more ash emissions one can explode for some reason is there any can we predict any of that not really the amounts of ash and things that we're going to get i don't i don't think so some volcanoes are labeled more dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like, some volcanoes, I think, um, like, if a, if a volcano goes off once, and they're like, oh, the sulfur emissions on this bitch are atrocious, we should evacuate towns. Yeah. When they repopulate the towns, and then it goes off again, they could be like, oh, back in the 90s when it went off, it had super high sulfur emissions. Like, that's pretty much it. If there's, I think, if there's more earthquakes, there's bound to be more eruptions. Yeah. That's, like, the only way to look at it. Mm Mm-hmm. Is. Go ahead. Sorry, whenever they, so whenever they, um, explain how bad a volcano is going to be, they usually judge it based on the severity of the blast itself and not... The consequences of it. Okay, cool. I think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the, it's called the volcanic explosivity index. That's what they mm. rate every volcano by. Oh, okay. Um. But if you go on USGS.gov, <laughs> you can see facts about them. Uh, it's a lot of scientific jargon sometimes, and it's a lot of numbers, but. Um, a lot of places, I think Hawaii 
does its own volcanic like update system like you can mm-hmm. find information about hawaiian volcanoes easier if you go to a hawaiian volcano website mm-hmm. um i think up in alaska it's called a of v alaskan something volcano i don't i don't i'm not really sure mm-hmm. um you can find more information about um I think who's going off right now, mainly in Alaska, is Cerberus. Oh, okay. So AOV will send its information to USGS, I think, is how this works. Mm-hmm. And what they're updating now is Cerberus, who is currently on a stained yellow. I don't know what that means. Interesting. Yellow is like, she's going off. Don't go yeah. near her. But it's not like... Orange, someone got hit in the face with a rock (laughs) that came out of the volcano. Yeah. You know? Mm Mm-hmm. Because I think, like, the basics of the color coding. Uh, But you can also see, if you go on the USGS.gov website, you can see a live map of who's going off. Color coded. Which I think is super neat, because you can just click on any of the volcanoes and be like, who the fuck is in Alaska? And you click on it, and it's like, oh, God! <laughs> oh, no! Um, but there's also, like, there's different factors between how dangerous a volcano is. Like, volcanoes can get more dangerous as they erupt, rather than the initial eruption. Like, the one that's in... Iceland that I'm in Reykjavik that I'm not going to try to pronounce because it has a really long name. Mm-hmm. Um, someone put on a someone filmed a music video on it, and then like an hour later they were like, "We have to evacuate the town." Oh my gosh! But also, it is rightfully called one of the most beautiful eruptions on on the planet right now. Oh wow! Because it was oh, beautiful. Wow. Um, but they, I think they evacuated, like, 16,000 people. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Someone filmed the music video. Uh, Bjork was like, I love a volcano! And then it got really scary, so they evacuated the town. Oh my god. <laughs> it's shit like that. Like, you can, people can chill out with it for hours, weeks, days. Mm-hmm. As long as it doesn't get near the town, it doesn't start, like, a forest fire, it doesn't whatever but then a wind can change or the there's more gas in the volcano and it pushes more magma up mm-hmm. and then it gets scary and then you yeah. have to close down the tourism paths to the fucking volcano which shouldn't have been opened in the first place humble opinion yeah can i just go and visit volcanoes then and stand at the edge I wouldn't if I was standing at the edge. Yeah, but I mean, can you just do that? Can you walk in? I think think some places will let you up near it. I think in Reykjavik, they let you within a certain footage, a certain meterage. I don't know what the fuck it was. I didn't look into it. Mm -hmm. Because Kilauea was going off and doing some cool stuff. So I was like, ooh. Yeah. But... I think it's also uh, common sense. There has to be, like, a common sense rule. And I don't Mm -hmm. think people who don't, who, who, I don't know how often the Reykjavik volcano goes off. I didn't look into it. Yeah. Um, but I know Kilauea goes off yearly. There's common sense there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Kilauea goes off. And it has a tendency to have a scary lava pool situation. We should not go near it. (laughs) Yeah. In Reykjavik, it was just flows, and it was nice. Um, not one that you can walk up to is Erebus in Antarctica, Mm -hmm. because you can't live in Antarctica, but scientists do, year-round. That's nice. Um, 
Erebus last week. I think it was last week. Holy fuck. Time means nothing to me. Erebus went up from just chilling with his lava to having four to six larger rocks explosions come out of it an hour. My gosh. And then I think it went back down to normal. Wow. So that that's how quickly it can uh, referencing St. Vincent again. If they experienced um I don't know the number, so I'll just call it a shit ton of That's fair. Earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And then overnight, people were screaming and evacuating. Oh my god. And then all of a sudden, it exploded, and there was 10,000 miles of, I don't know, the kilometer, uh, the, the, the switch here, so I guess you can Google it. Uh, 10,000 uh, elevation uh, ash plumes. Oh my god. Which I think went down to 8,000 feet ash plumes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where it's at now. But they evacuated from that one single town, they evacuated 16,000 or 17,000 people from the, the one town immediately. And I think it was something... It was some crazy fucking number of population was fleeing to the other side of St. Vincent. Yeah. But it was so many, it was so many people and it was so unorganized because it was so sudden. Oh no. That it was just people in cars waiting on highways. Mm -hmm. I think when That's we talked terrible. when we talked about it when it was happening like the day it happened me and you were talking about it. You said something like, how, <laughs> I don't remember what the fuck you said, but mm -hmm. you were like, where do these people go? Yeah, yeah. Where do these people go? That's like, um, Pompeii. People yeah. watched Pompeii happen mm -hmm. from a ship or wherever the fuck they were on another coastline. They watched the volcano go off and murder however many people were murdered at Pompeii. Like, there's nothing you can do. People can't flee. Yeah. If you're, like, when you were saying about all of the cars stuck on the highway, at that point, if you're stuck there and you're not moving, is it even worth it to get out and just try and get as far away as you can from it on foot? Or is this not the kind of thing that you can outrun in any way? It depends on the volcano. Okay. St. Vincent didn't have... Um... I think what they said about Pompeii is that Pompeii was, like, lava, ash, lava, ash. People died from inhalation. People died from the heat, I'm guessing. Yeah. The St. Vincent shoved all of its ash into the air, but all of that ash started falling six hours later, seven hours later. I don't know. I don't remember the, the hour. Oh, okay, so you had a So chance. they had yeah. the span of time to get out. Okay. But they didn't have, if you're not out with it in that, like, six, seven hour mark, you're getting covered in ash. Mm hmm The ash is what gets you. Because yeah. it's it's full of, it's, I think it's called tephra. The, the ash is called tephra. Tephra is metal. Yeah. Tephra is the minerals and the metal that makes up rock, which is why when it hits the flow, it turns to rock. Mm -hmm. So you're inhaling metal. Oh my gosh. God, that's insane. And that's why when they have big uh, ash plumes like that. Yeah, it's scary, but it's also gonna kill somebody, at least a couple people you can't evacuate. Mm -hmm. And there's other shit like the sulfur or whatever the gas emissions are. Those will get you too. Yeah. I don't know how quick. I don't know how quick any of this gets you. Mm -hmm. 
but after a while, it's... That's it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Also, we hit the end of my notes a while ago, so on you to end say, us. <laughs> you're out of, yeah, you're out of time, and I really I hate to end it on, like, here's all the horrible ways that you can die. <laughs> um, getting my brain for um, something else to say. Volcanoes shouldn't, no, what oh, wasn't it? Super volcanoes shouldn't be feared because they probably will not fucking go off in our lifetime. That's a comfort. You get a probably. Mm-hmm. That's a comfort. Yeah, yeah. Yellowstone is so. stable. Yellowstone's a sleepy boy. He's just a, a, a tired man. He's sleeping. Yeah. That's like the only <laughs> one that you have to worry about. And you don't yeah, even have to worry about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Well, <laughs> look in, look into USGS.gov. I was just going to say, <laughs> if you're interested in seeing. Which volcanoes are active and which are dormant and what's going on with them currently, you can go to the website that Sam has brought up multiple times. And also, you can check it out. if you frequent a single or multiple volcanoes enough, Google Trends will send you live updates to your phone. There you have it, folks. But you have to subscribe to them. Please subscribe to them when they appear. Thank you. 